time. So good morning and good afternoon. Uh, see, today we will continue with uh, our uh, uh, representation of state space equation uh, in state space, right? So that's essentially governing differential equation uh, uh, of uh, 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 say second order system that we have seen in the last class. This basic vibratory system, uh, mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero, or there can be some forcing function. So um, if that is given, how can you represent that as a uh, state space equation? Uh, so, um, there are a lot of advantages that you represent uh, nth order system of your uh, system uh, into state space form. So, if we have state matrix, so you would be able to uh, um, uh, use that uh, uh, in terms of uh, designing your control system, in terms of uh, uh, finding out your responses, that response can be your steady state response or your transient response and so on. So, it is easy to handle. Uh, uh, state equations. Why? Because see the state space approach is all because of modern control engineering. So you, before modern control system, we had a conventional control system studies. So in conventional control system studies, there are limitations like we can have linear time invariant systems and that too we can study only in complex uh, frequency domain. Uh, only uh, the conventional control theory could be applied. Whereas uh, uh, modern control engineering is able to do time domain or frequency domain uh, uh, for multiple input, multiple output uh, uh, systems. Uh, whereas uh, in conventional uh, control theory, we could uh, uh, have a control strategies designed only for single input, single output uh, systems. So that is where uh, the popularity of modern control engineering has come. And it is completely driven by uh, representation of your differential equation of your system into single order systems uh, with the help of state space representation. So that is in short, uh, what is that we are doing to understand? I just have told you now. And let's continue with what uh, we were doing it in the last class and uh, get down to uh, the stability analysis of our bicycle model. That is what is the objective of today's class. So let me just share. Uh, uh, my uh, board. So I hope you are able to see this board. Mm, and you see in the last class, uh, we were just looking at some important terms uh, as far as this control theory uh, is concerned. That is essentially transfer function. So we were able to differentiate open loop transfer function, feed forward transfer function and closed loop transfer functions. So basically we had to have open loop system and closed loop system design. So closed loop system design is essential as far as uh, your vehicle uh, uh, dynamics is concerned when you are marching towards the autonomous vehicle study because you have to always uh, to have to look at the output and take the uh, feedback from the output and then you look at with the uh, uh, compare with the input, then you get your corrected signal, and then again and again you have to um, um, go through this loop. And that is the reason why uh, closed loop systems are very much essential in design of autonomous vehicle. What is that open loop system refer to? So open loop system is referred to and the output, whatever that you get, it is not necessarily depends upon your input because you're not going to uh, have a, a, a uh, feedback signal and going to compare with your input. So uh, you give an input and you get whatever that output it gives and that is going to only characterize your uh, system. But that system, uh, if it gives you an output also similar to that of input, then it is good system. Otherwise, you have to improvise your system. That's a uh, uh, difference between open loop and closed loop uh, control system designs. So we were just looking at these uh, two slides in the last class. Uh, you see that uh, we were doing this all. So basically it is uh, uh, in time domain, if you have to analyze it, uh, you require convolution integral. So that can be replaced by products in uh, uh, Laplace domain. So that is essentially is what X is equal to G of S and T of S in open loop system that you have seen. And then we just have uh, looked at uh, uh, how, how does it appear. Uh, in a block diagram or in a control system design, these transfer functions. 
So this is the simplest uh, uh, design that I have put it. So you can have according to your physical system and its requirement uh, of uh, required output for the given input and the system nature can be uh, uh, characterized. For example, if you look at uh, a vibratory system that is uh, characterized by its elastic elasticity as well as damping nature. So like that, uh, if you have your system and you know what are the parameters that are characterizing your output and you would be able to have an appropriate uh, um, transfer function for the system, right? So uh, this is what we have seen in first hand and then we looked at uh, a generic uh, uh, system approach where you have nth order system and which is being excited by nth order differential uh, function. So you see that uh, uh, right hand side and left hand side of these equations are differential equations function of time. So uh, if you have nth order system, you can have n single integrators, time integrators, so that you would be able to get n uh, single order equations. That's the idea. And uh, similarly, you can have your output on this side can have m uh, order out, outputs. Uh, sorry, inputs. This is input, right? B naught uh, d power m u by d t power m. This, this is uh, your input uh, differential equation. So how do you represent this uh, in the form of uh, um, uh, uh, Laplace domain is that you take on both sides Laplace transform with the initial uh, condition zero. So if you do so, you would have two polynomials. Left hand side, you will have polynomial which is a naught s power n plus a one s power n minus one and so on up to a n. On the right hand side, you'll get b naught uh, s power m, b one s power m minus one up to b m. So you are able to get your uh, transfer function uh, C of s by R of s by ratios of two polynomials. So these polynomials, if you look at uh, m, n. So the order of uh, numerator polynomial is m, the order of denominator polynomial is n. In this, the denominator polynomial is what is called the characteristic polynomial of the system. When you equate this characteristic polynomial, equating to zero, then it is what is called an eigenvalue problem. You are essentially uh, trying to solve your stability analysis, right? That's what we are going to look at uh, today's class. So in this uh, transfer function, the denominator polynomial is what is our interest. So how do you get this denominator polynomial for any physical system given? is what we have to understand. So if we are able to describe your physical system by its differential equation, then you can represent that differential equation into a state space form. So you would be able to get what is your state matrix. If we have your state matrix, you would be able to find out the denominator polynomial. Right, so that is what is that idea. So for that idea to understand, we just took this second order system uh, here, uh, which is a simple mass spring damper system. So for any forcing function u of t, uh, you would be able to have the vibratory system described here. So you would be able to get uh, your transfer function uh, uh, nicely if you represent the second order equation into two single order equation. That is what uh, you are doing it through state space approach. So that is uh, uh, already I explained you. So this is self explanatory. Now you can look at this. So I had uh, now uh, state equation one and the output equation two and uh, the block diagram for the same is what is represented here, right? So this is where we just stopped. We will just continue with uh, uh, today's class uh, looking at uh, again uh, some of this control theory uh, in more detail and how can you get your transfer function using state matrix. So that's what I'm going to explain you now. So this is lecture number 31 and today's date is 15 04 And uh, today we are going to look at the general state space equation. Let us just look at state space equations. So how are they represented, general state space equation? So as I was telling this general state space equation can be uh, for multiple input 
multiple output system. It can also handle single input, uh, single output system. And uh, this is more generic, so it can be multiple input, multiple output system problem, right? And you can have your <coughs> state equation given by x dot of t. Sometimes you can write this as q or x, uh, any one you can use it. So x dot of t equals a of t, x of t plus b of t, e of t. That is state equation. And uh, the second equation is output equation. Y of t equals C of t into X of t plus B of t into E of t. So this is output equation. So you have these two equations. So in this, if you look at what are these uh, uh, A, B, C, D. See, A, B, C, D also are function of time. So here, actually A is a matrix and that's called the state matrix. Um, and B is again a matrix that's called an input matrix. And C is what is called an output matrix. And D is what is called a direct transmission matrix. Direct transmission matrix. Right, so if I have like this, uh, my system described, so this A, B, C, D can also be having the parameter which were varying as function of time or which cannot vary with function of time can be invariant parameters. So if they are invariant parameter, they are going to be simply with the numerical values matrices. Whereas X of T here is what is state variables. X of T is state variables. Right? And uh, E of T is what is your input uh, function. E of T is what is your input function. Our input, uh, uh, Y of T here is what is your output uh, response. So uh, this is what is the general representation of your uh, uh, state space equation. So you, you can of course uh, put them in a block uh, diagram representation as it is uh, uh, essentially obtained for control system design. So how can you do that? It's very simple. So I have my input function u of t and that acts as an input. So that input would always See, look at now my equation, input equation, it's multiplied with the B matrix, right? B of T or B matrix. So if I take that B of T uh, matrix here, so this signal, input signal, sent through B of T get multiplied. E of T, B of T. So that is this first term. So now uh, I get my X of T is what is my state variable. X dot of T is what is my state uh, uh, de derivative of state variable, uh, which is given by single order differential equation, state equation, right? So I would get uh, now uh, like this. So this goes to a summing point, and in the summing point, I would have so this term to be summed with what? With the at xt. But uh, what is that? I'll get out of this is what is my derivative of state variable. So if this is derivative of state variable, then I should integrate that. So there will be an integrator. And if I integrate this, what do I get is x of t, my state variables. But the state variable should be, so my uh, x of t, first equation to get x dot of t is what is a of t plus x of t, so int x of t plus this. So what I should do is I to take a signal from here, and that has to be passed through a state matrix A of T. And that will be summed here again. So since it is summed here, this is again plus sign. So these two, this is what is representing the first equation. So what is my second equation? Output equation. So output equation is output matrix multiplied by state variable. 
so i would have here again uh, um, output matrix c of t so this get multiplied so i would get that out where i should also have this du and that is obtained straight away from my input that's why it's called direct transmission matrix from here i should have to take d of t and take that again here so i should essentially have here as well the summing point so this plus and this plus so here c of t x of t plus d of t e of t is what is going to be my y of t that's my output so this is simple uh, block uh, uh, diagram of linear continuous time control system so what is this block diagram for or block diagram representation block diagram representation of linear time control why time control is because it's not only state variable is function of time also these matrices are function of time the parameter the elements representing inside the matrix is also a uh, function of time uh, control system so such kind of complex uh, system can be designed with the help of state space approach so the basic uh, underlying statement of state space representation is discretizing or bringing down nth order system to n single order system so if i have nth order system i require n time integrators so that i will have n single order system so this is a general representation of uh, uh, equations in state space right so now uh, let us understand how are you going to get the transfer function from the state equations right so if i say that uh, a b c d are not time control parameters time invariant parameters i can represent those equation again like this so i i said already that you can represent either x dot or q dot let me take q dot equals a q plus b u and y equals c q plus d u i purposely put q here so that you should be well uh, mathematical textbook if you look at it will be represented in x if you look at in transfer uh, means control theory book you will see that uh, state variables are given by q vector right so here uh, if uh, this is your state equation state equation and output equation then uh, you would be able to get your transfer function like this what do you have to do is uh, take laplace transform apply laplace transform on both side of these equations so let me take first to the state equation and take laplace transform on both side so q dot so q, q dot if i take laplace transform it is s q of s minus q of 0 so when i say initial conditions are zero this is going to be zero if i have here q double dot then accordingly this term will be different if i have q triple dot this term will be different so i take this so when i say initial condition zero this is all terms q of 0 uh, in q double dot it will be q dash of 0 plus uh, like that terms will come so you would have only the first term uh, remain there right so now i just to put it as i take laplace transform, transform on both side so this is going to be on left hand side of this equation on right hand side it is a q of s plus b u of s and now i can take this q of s on this side so it is going to be uh, s q of s minus a q of s on this side it is b u of s so if i take q of s out it is going to be s i minus a q of s and this side it is uh, b u of s b u of s All right so now uh, again uh, this is first equation uh, then look at the second equation take it laplace transform so that's going to be 
is y of t. So y of t transform Laplace transform of that will be s y of s, and that's equal to not s y of s. Uh, it's only y of s. Why? Because it's not derivative. It's just y of t. So it is going to be y of s. And that's equal to C Q of S plus D E of S. All right. So now here uh, uh, Q of S is what I have to get. So this would give me Q of S state equation I can get. So this would go on the other side. So when you have a matrix goes on the other side, it become inverse. So S I minus A inverse. B E of S. What is there? So substitute this Q of S here. So I would have C into S I minus A inverse B E of S plus D E of S. And in this E of S is common that you take out. So that's going to be C. SI minus A inverse B plus D into U of S. On this side it is Y of S. So what is my transfer function? It is Y of S by E of S. I will have that C SI minus I is identity matrix A inverse B plus D. So it's given by this. So if I have my uh, system represented by state space equations and corresponding output equation, then I can get my trans function like this. So we can just verify that uh, with that uh, what we have looked at in the last class for uh, uh, mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to e of t. So it is very simple here to find out using Laplace transform. Transfer function can also be obtained through uh, uh, Laplace transform. Putting initial condition zero, if I put, this is going to be m s square x of s plus c uh, uh, s, uh, s x of s c uh, s x of s plus k x of s equal to e of s. So this is what taking Laplace transform. Laplace transform with the initial condition 0. If I put, this is what I get. So here m s square plus c s plus k into x of s is what is u of s. So x of s is what is my output in my uh, vibration equation. So that's going to be x of s by u of s. This is my transfer function. That's going to be 1 by m s square plus c s plus k. So this is my transfer function. So this transfer function, I can get it uh, uh, even from the state matrix. So that's what we let us just look at. So what are the matrices that we had for that last class we have done it, right? So we had now A matrix for the same. Uh, uh, we had a 0, 1, minus K by M, minus C by M. This was uh, A matrix. What was B matrix? That was B vector. So that has happened to be 0, 1 by M. And what was output uh, vector here? Because it is uh, single output. So you had a, a vector form. This can also take a matrix form. So this is what we had is 1, 0. Right? And uh, uh, D matrix, direct translation matrix, 0. So we had this. So by substituting that in this equation, I would be able to get my transfer function. So what does uh, G of S? That is uh, C SI minus A inverse B plus D, right? 
So in this D0, so I would be able to get this. So it is 1, 0, dot, uh, SI minus A inverse, SI minus A inverse, B0, 1 by M. Is what is my transfer function. So this I would be able to get now uh, nicely. So first, let me find out what is this SI minus A inverse, right? So what is the SI minus A matrix? SI minus A matrix is S yes, 0, 0, S yes, minus A matrix 0, 1 minus K by M minus C by M. So that's going to be S yes, minus 1 minus k by m, s minus of minus or s plus c by m. So this is my si minus a matrix. So now inverse of that, so si minus a inverse is going to be adjoint of si minus a by determinant of SI minus A. So how do I get that? So that's going to be adjoint is uh, cofactor transverse matrix. So that would be uh, changing this diagonal. So it's going to be S plus C by M. Yes. And changing this signs in this. Right? Changing the signs in this. Uh, So is it correctly done here? That's minus of uh, minus. So this is plus, right? This is again here. It's plus. So changing this uh, diagonal terms and changing the signs. Uh, so that's going to be one minus k by m. So this is uh, cofactor transpose by uh, determinant. So determinant of that is uh, s square plus c by m yes. Uh, minus of minus plus k by m. So this is the determinant. So this I have it now, si minus a. So I can just substitute uh, with this back again. Uh, so what is that I'll have? So it is 1, 0, dot. And uh, this is 2 by 2 matrix now. This is 2 by 1. So it, I'll get 2 by 1 vector. So this 2 vector dot product will give me finally a numerator. Of course, in denominator, I have this term S square plus C by M, yes, plus K by M. So here it is going to be, uh, um, it's going to be multiplying this, yes, plus C by M by, sorry, minus K by M, 1, this is M, this is S, into, uh, here it is 0, 1 by M, right? So first let us do this. So that's going to be 1, 0, dot here what do i get so this zero this is one by m so one by m and zero s by m by s square plus c by m s plus k by m so this is all equal to so this dot product is one by m so one by m by s square plus c by m yes plus k by m. So what is that I will get now? So this is going to be uh, 1 by m s square plus c s plus k is what is my transfer function. So you can also get through this. So see, since it is of single uh, input and single output system and it is of second order system, it's become easier. 
right in case you uh, know uh, here the parameters are only damping value and uh, um, uh, your stiffness value so the same in bicycle model you see your ai matrix depends upon uh, vehicle design parameter and vehicle tire uh, stiffness values and mass value of vehicle and uh, your i value mass moment of inertia so many terms are there inside in your ai matrix so in such cases uh, this kind of approach is very very quite useful approach for finding out your transfer function or <clears throat> any other thing so similarly uh, you can also see uh, how do you get your transient uh, response that we will see separately in another day and now let us get into what do you mean by uh, stability analysis of your bicycle model so i am going to take back our bicycle model and uh, we will look at that so what was our state equations of bicycle model so we had So let us look at now our bicycle model. So V dot is my first equation that's equal to minus C alpha F plus C alpha R by M U into V plus minus A C alpha F plus B C alpha R B C alpha R by M U minus U into R plus C alpha F by M delta and R dot B and R no one should differentiate properly so this is R dot. That we had minus y c alpha y plus b c alpha r by i z z i z z u into v plus minus y squared c alpha y minus b squared c alpha r by i z z u into r plus y c alpha f by i z z into delta. So this will be delta f delta f. So these were the two state equations, right? Uh, this is not. Uh, uh, these are the two single order uh, equations of our bicycle model. So we can combine this as uh, state uh, and represent as a state equation in this form. Q dot is equal to a q plus b u. Right. So here, uh, uh, what is my a matrix? If I do so, I am not going to write. Already we have written this form equation. So a matrix only. Let us take. So here we have a matrix. It's minus C alpha F plus C alpha R by M U and minus A C alpha F plus B C alpha R by M U minus U minus A C alpha F plus B C alpha R by I Z Z U. And minus a squared. So minus if I take out a squared c alpha f plus b squared c alpha r by i z z u. So this is my a matrix, right? So you are given the data of uh, tire cornering stiffness, then vehicle mass. Uh, so m is here. It's not spring mass. It's the total vehicle mass because in our bicycle model we do not discretize the mass as we do not consider the suspension in our model. So this is total mass of the vehicle. I Z Z is what is total mass moment of inertia of the vehicle, and A B you know A is front axle position from C G location, axially measured, and um, you know, what is B is rear axle location from C G along the longitudinal direction measured, right? So these are all parameters you know. Most importantly in this you see U is what is given where U is forward speed of your vehicle. So these all are uh, different. So when you say this A is constant, this is not a function of time. So U is constant. That is what is steady state uh, uh, motion. 
So when you say that uh, forward velocity u is not uh, varying, it's constant that I can plug in here. So I will have my A matrix, which is 2 by 2 matrix. Right, so if I have this, I can find now uh, uh, what is my characteristic polynomial. Right, so in this C, if I have my uh, uh, u input 0, then what is that analysis that I do is essentially eigenvalue analysis. That is again what is called perturbation study or stability, vehicle stability analysis. So what do you mean by vehicle stability? So for that you should understand what do you mean by stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium and neutral equilibrium in mechanics that you have studied. So how do you represent uh, equilibrium? Equilibrium means, what do you mean by uh, equilibrium means? Equilibrium means, see so you have a flat surface over which you see this is a simple example that always we recollect when you want to understand this. A sphere is kept. So if the sphere is disturbed, then it will go to an another adjacent position. It will not come back to this position, but still it is under stable condition. See, it is uh, there itself. So I just to give small uh, push here that comes here and stays there, but it does not come back, but it is staying there. It is again maintaining its equilibrium, it's stable there. So if I do that, uh, this kind of equilibrium is what is called a neutral equilibrium. If the same, if I have, instead of a flat surface, a curved surface uh, like this, and then I have the same sphere over here, and I disturb the sphere, perturb the sphere, so this will oscillate in this, and then it will settle uh, again at this position after some time. So that is called a stable equilibrium. Instead of having my uh, curved surface uh, uh, like this, so if I have my curved surface, uh, and the other way, like this, and I have this sphere kept over this. Mathematically, again, this defines as equilibrium position, but this equilibrium would not uh, be uh, obtained back if this is being disturbed. So if I just uh, touch this, this will fall out, and then this equilibrium would be uh, lost, and that is called an unstable equilibrium. So now what do you mean by equilibrium state, a stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium of your vehicle that you are uh, looking at it? So if you look at our uh, vehicle is this, uh, where um, this is a vehicle representation, simple representation. So I have this four wheels. Is my vehicle so this goes in this direction there is a side wind gust is acting on this and then the state of this supposing if it goes uh, uh, in a straight line at an angle like this that is what is neutral uh, steer effect or neutral equilibrium that you have seen in case if this makes this vehicle to go in a curve away from this that is under steer tendency but uh, this is going to be time being so this will oscillate about this point and then it can come back again uh, go on this instead if you look at uh, if this vehicle comes inwards that's over steer tendency uh, that's what is felt so the vehicle which is originally under equilibrium uh, when it is moving because of this disturbance if the vehicle cannot come back and go straight instead it goes into spinning about this point, uh, an arbitrary motion that it has got, then it is what is unstable equilibrium. So this is unstable. This is unstable equilibrium. This is stable equilibrium. And this one, what we call it as a neutral equilibrium. Neutral equilibrium, right? So if you have um, understood that in your mind, then again, I can go back to our um, looking at stability point of view. Uh, let's just look at again, uh, I'm going to have 
my nth order system right like uh, we have looked at so this what is equilibrium we will we will just see that mathematically how do you go about uh, stating that this vehicle is going to be uh, ensuring absolute stability or uh, it is not going to be stable without solving equations so something called rao stability criteria so that's what we will get into in a minute so before that again let us look at uh, how do you go about uh, talking about this uh, stability of the system like when you say that it is unstable when you say it is stable when you say uh, um, uh, it is a neutral equilibrium position like that to say so uh, nth order system if i take again if i take again i know that nth order system is represented by a differential equation in this form So one plus g n minus one uh, d power d x by d t plus g n right plus g n and that's what is equal to a polynomial here. And you have to write now that's equal to zero. So my right hand side should be equal to zero. So this entire problem would become as an eigenvalue problem, right? So you see now here I have a nth order uh, differential equation. So this nth order differential equation can be written as n single order equations. So those uh, representation I just write it here. So x1 dot by n uh, state variables that I will have. So x1 dot uh, equals a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus and so on plus a1n xn. So what is x1, x2, x2, x3 and so on up to xn or xn are that many number of state variables. So x2 dot would be a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus and so on plus a2n xn. So like that I can write xn dot which should be equal to a n 1 x 1 plus a n 2 x 2 plus and so on plus a n n x n. So like that I can represent this nth order equation into this form so that this would all be going to be represented as x 1 dot x 2 dot and so on to x n dot that's equal to a matrix which is uh, called an A matrix, right? So that's going to be A11, A12, A1n, A21, A22, A2n, An1, An2, Annn, right? So this is going to be n by n matrix into x1, x2, xn factor. So where I have made my bu is 0, so this is what is now uh, my differential equation uh, represented as n single order equations and in this, this is what is my A matrix. This is what is my A matrix. So this should uh, continue like this and uh, here it is going to be A33 diagonal terms out, right? Like this. So now, what is the solution of this equation? Solution of this equation can be see, I consider x of t as uh, given by x e raised to st, where s is the Laplace variable. So if that is so, x dot of t is what? Yes, x e raised to st. x double dot of t, s square, x e raised to st. And so on. If I have x n dot of t, what would happen? If I continue this as my solution, x n dots that I have, 1 to n, that's going to be s power n, x e power s t. So this all, if I substitute in my uh, governing equation, uh, governing equation is this. 
governing equation is this one. So if I substitute my solution in this equation, what is that I would get is simply my polynomial. So a naught s power n plus a 1 s power n minus 1 plus a 2 s power n minus 2 plus and so on plus a n uh, is all into uh, x e raised to st that's equal to 0. To avoid triviality x e raised to st cannot be 0 so this polynomial can be made equal to 0 for non-trivial solution to exist for non-trivial solutions a naught s power n plus a 1 s power n minus 1 plus a 2 s power n minus 2 plus and so on plus a n equals 0. So this polynomial is what is called the characteristic polynomial. This is what is called characteristic polynomial which can also be obtained by si minus a determinant equating to 0. So which can also be obtained by this. Remember that. So I have got now this. So now why did I get this is because I have here a polynomial of order n and see here a n is not equal to 0. I have this that means there is no 0 roots. So I will have n roots for this. So for this polynomial, there exist n roots. If I solve n roots, if these n roots are lying in uh, on the complex plane. So what is complex plane? This is complex plane. This is S plane called. In S plane, you'll have positive integers, negative integers on this side. So these are real numbers, positive and negative numbers. And here it is going to be um, um omega j omega so it's going to be plus j omega to minus j omega so given a complex number it will have uh, real part and complex part so you will have it that's a complex root so that can lie on this plane so for a stability of your system and you say that is an absolute stability ensured for the system in this polynomial these all coefficients of this polynomial, a0, a1, a2, and so on up to an, all should be of positive values. If these all are positive values, then I can factorize them as a linear factors or quadratic factors or cubic factor and so on. So all the factors coefficients are positive coefficients of variable s. Yes. Uh, then what would happen? You would have all of these values are lying on the left half plane. So this is left half plane and this is right half plane. In your complex plane, the roots of the characteristic polynomial lie on the left half plane. The system is stable system. If this lies on this side, it is unstable system. So you can see that if we have any of this value, one coefficient is negative, then you can have uh, the chance of getting, definitely you'll get a root at least, which should have a positive real part. So that will come on the right half plane and uh, the system is not stable. So by having the characteristic polynomial, by just looking at this coefficient, one can comment on the stability of the system. So now what is my characteristic polynomial of my bicycle that we had got into uh, this form? Remember, we derived the characteristic polynomial by doing this SI minus A determinant. So we had S square plus some value of S plus some value that's equal to 0. So if these two are positive, see here one positive, all are positive, then uh, it is stable system. But uh, there can be a chance that uh, though it is stable, it is said, it can enter into an unstable state. So you cannot just say that if you have all these positive coefficients are ensuring stability. That's the first sight. Uh, if all are positive, there is uh, uh, definitely a, a chance of having it. But uh, if we look at, this is not going to be one constant value. The parameters are going to decide this value. It appears here. So to ensure this all are positive, you should uh, go further in detail. That's where you have your raw stability criteria, right? 
So, see here, interestingly, if I have to carry out this SI minus A determinant, that's going to be what? That's going to be A, uh, let me represent A as A of my bicycle model as, for simplicity, I'm going to have this element A11, A12, A21, A22. This is only I write. So if I have that, this is going to be, this is going to be S minus A11, minus A12, minus A21, S minus A22, right? So the determinant of this, if I look at, it is going to be S squared minus A11 plus A22 into S plus A11, A22 minus A12, A21. That's equal to zero. So this is what I'll get. So now you see here, I have here minus of this. This is what is uh, now my characteristic polynomial. In this characteristic polynomial, uh, I have now here, see this is negative. And here it is, uh, it can be negative or positive. It depends on this. So now, uh, this is in this form of A naught S square plus A1 S plus A2, that's equal to zero. So what is my A naught in this is one. A1 is minus A1, one plus A2, two, two. A2 is A11, one, one, A22 two, two, minus A12, A21. Two, two, so these are the values. So if A naught, A1, A2 all are positive, then um, I could say that is absolute stability. So this is what is uh, uh, the condition proposed by uh, Rauth. Also that's named after Rauth stability criteria. Rauth stability criteria. So here uh, A naught should be greater than zero, A1 should be greater than zero, A2 should be greater than zero. So that's a condition. So is it possible for a vehicle to be unstable? If so, under what condition it is going to be unstable? This is what is the question that we have to do. So for that, now you can look at this uh, uh, comparison. So A11, you have your A matrix. You have your A matrix here. See here you see A11 has got a minus here. A22 has got a minus. So A11 plus A22 is minus and there is minus sign outside here so that goes so that is going to be positive so there is no term here is negative right see here uh, a is what is the distance this distance is all are positive quantities so this sum is minus minus of minus become plus so a1 is positive so a naught of course is positive that's one in our uh, characteristic polynomial and A1 is again positive. A2, you look at here. So this minus this, that if I work out, there is a chance that that can uh, go negative. If that goes negative, then you cannot talk on an absolute stability. Or you can derive that condition. What is uh, the condition for uh, 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 A2 to be? positive. So let us just look at only A2 value. I'm not going to work out so much. Uh, I, I just write down uh, if I substitute for this A2, A11, A22, these elements from my A matrix, right? And I continue, I would have my A2 was like this, 1 by I is at, is at M U square plus B C alpha R minus A C alpha F divided by I Z L square C alpha F C alpha R. Uh, this is what I would get into L square C alpha F C alpha R. So, I get this. So when I do this A11, A22 minus A12, A21 of the elements of my 
state matrix of a bicycle model, I get this, and this should be greater than zero. That's the condition, right? For uh, uh, the absolute stability. So when I put this to be uh, greater than zero, now you look at here, I can take this uh, A is at is at MU squared out here. So if I take that out, it's going to be one plus I is at because already there is term, there are terms here. So it's going to be I is at M U square into B C alpha R minus A C alpha F by I is at is at uh, L square C alpha F C alpha R. When I have taken I is at M U out, I will have here outside. L squared C alpha of C alpha R by I Z M U squared. That should be greater than zero. See now this I Z I Z goes out, and I will have my equation here, which is already that we have seen in one of the class. It's going to be one plus uh, M into B C alpha R minus A C alpha F into U squared divided by L squared C alpha of C alpha R. And here you have uh, this term uh, is positive term. So this constant term that goes out. So this should be greater than zero. Right? There is no negative value that is going to come from this 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 value, this term. So you have this condition now imposed. So you see there this term is what is uh, your uh, stability factor defined already we have seen. Which is k3 u square that should be greater than zero for stability. So if that is uh, uh, the condition, then I would derive what is my uh, u critical that's going to be under root of 1 by k3 minus 1 by k3. So k3 happens to be negative, that is overstayed vehicle, and here it's minus. Uh, uh, so uh, I would have that uh, um, this minus minus goes plus and I'll get the critical velocity at that is the speed uh, my vehicle would enter into uh, unstable state right so that condition now to avoid uh, getting into unstable state it is this critical speed so KUS is what is see if I just work out here u squared is equal to from here u squared is going to be uh, uh, This on that side it goes right, it's going to be minus 1 uh, by k3. So u is going to be greater than minus 1 by k3. So this is what you get. So uh, So what is that you understand from this? Uh, is this right? So u critical value is this. So u is greater than minus one by uh, k3 under root of one by minus one by k3. This is a condition uh, that uh, you would have uh, absolute stability. Uh, is that correct? What is that? Uh, No, no, you have to see that if K3 happens to be negative here, if K3 happens to be negative here, you are able to define your U. So that is what you, you get your uh, critical speed that is here defined, right? So till your critical speed, uh, this value is positive. That is the meaning, right? So U3 can be of this critical speed, so you get one, so that it will be always greater than zero to say to have your stability. If uh, U value is greater than critical speed, what would happen is that uh, this would start decreasing. There is a chance that uh, you will have here. Uh, this term goes into negative. Right, because this is going to be K3 is what is uh, uh, now here uh, plus K3. This K3 is negative in your uh, uh, physical meaning of K3 is what stability factor it is. 
So the stability factor is negative is what is referring to oversteer tendency of your vehicle. So the oversteer tendency of the vehicle will always, uh, uh, though it is an equilibrium, will undergo uh, an unstable equilibrium. So when it will undergo unstable equilibrium, as the speed reaches to its critical speed. Why? Because if uh, you get K3 value minus, this 1 minus K3 U square it becomes. So uh, when you have this speed limit here, that's going to make uh, here the value, uh, is it greater than 0 or less? So when uh, the uh, value till critical speed, you would have uh, chance of uh, uh, greater or equal to 0. After that, it is going to be negative value. That is what is enforced here. So this is what is uh, Rao stability criteria. Just looking at the uh, coefficient of the characteristic polynomial or characteristic equation, not to say characteristic polynomial, characteristic equation, coefficients if you look at and you can talk on and observe stability. Is what is this? But still, uh, it is easier for a second order system. So if I have n third order system, uh, uh, how do you do? That is what is an advantage of this Rao stability criterion. So I will have nth order characteristic polynomial. So uh, I don't require to find the roots of them and see that how many are lying on the uh, uh, right half plane so that I can say that this is unstable. I, or all the roots are lying on the left half plane so all are absolute stable to say. So for that you have to look at uh, the uh, uh, coefficients. So there are conditions, criterions explained by Rao's stability criterion. There are procedures uh, that we will just look at in the next class. And then uh, we will uh, continue with our transient response study later on, right? So at this point of time, let me stop uh, uh, today's class. In case you have any doubts, you can ask. Otherwise, we will proceed. Do you have any doubts? You can, otherwise you can. I'll stop recording.